storm show. Hey, it's a storm show. Now, what is up, Storm Chasers? Y'all know I had to come back and talk to you guys about the fact that Mace responded to Diddy. Now, unless you've been under a rock, we already know that Diddy went on to The Breakfast Club and gave basically this viral-ass interview where he is saying, I'm out, I'm proud. Not out like that. Let me <laughs> let me back that up. Not out like that. Not, basically, he's saying, I'm awake. I've been asleep, but now I've awakened from my slumber. I've been slumming with a city girl, and now I'm ready to defend myself and all the lies that people have been putting out about me, why I wasn't really addressing it, and why I wasn't able to address it. And so one of the main people he called out was Mace. and said, Mace owed me $3 million. Mace owed a God. Three million dollars. I don't owe Mace anything. I ain't never stole nothing from Mace. Now, I did not address this in my previous video, but let me get something very straight. Uh, Diddy, what God is you talking about? <laughs> what God? You not a God. You not a deity. What, what, what God is you talking about? Is it Lucy? Is it? I don't. I know there well it ain't Jehovah. What God is? It ain't the Jesus of Nazareth. I need you to tell us, nigga. You left that out. But anyway, let me play Mace's response, and then we will be back to discuss it. So let's play it right now. Let's go. Yo, how did this nigga tell my he want receipts? Let's start with your mother, nigga. Your mother got the receipts, nigga. Everything is in your mother name. That's the one who got the receipts, nigga. You need more proof, nigga? Biggie ain't here, so Big can't give you no receipts. He dead. Craig Mack can't give you receipts. He dead. Hmm. What are you talking about? Who else? Black Rob can't give you receipts. He dead. Hmm. And everybody else, you may sign paperwork so they can't talk about what I'm talking about. I'm the only one with the guts. Hmm. Do not sign it, nigga, because I ain't need the money. All money ain't good money. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that, nigga. You know who to play with, nigga. All right. All right, so y'all heard Mace respond, okay? Now, in that response, it was a, a few things that stuck out to me. Number one, first thing out of Mace's mouth, you know who got the receipts, did he? Because your mother got the receipts. I said, damn, not him talking about Miss Mrs. Gones. Not him bringing the mama into it. Now, you know, this is finna get real in these streets. I hope y'all know that. The retrograde is over. Now we're in the shadow period. The retrograde is what brought out all of this uh, tomfoolery from everybody on the damn internet. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for the revenue. But anyway, I needed some shit to talk about. But but let me tell you something. These, these, the, Mesa's response is not going to go without some repercussions from not necessarily from Diddy, but definitely from his camp. So just keep an eye out for, for that on the internet. And I am predicting that we're probably gonna see some ramifications from this very video slash response around our next retrograde, which I believe is in January or December, one or the other. I don't, I don't know if it's December or January, but anyway, whenever we hit that next retrograde that's coming up, you're going to see some more shit come out. But anyway, let's just address what he was talking about, all right? Mace is saying, look, you, uh, 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 Diddy, there's not going to be any receipts because basically you got everybody on NDAs that work with you, okay? You put life insurance policies on everybody that work with you, and you got everything in your mama's name. Now, look, when it comes to putting shit in different people's names, rich people hire people to uh, put them on game so they can avoid taxes, in any way that they can, we already know the game. But that ain't even important. What's important is that he named Biggie, he named uh, Craig Mack, and he named one other person that I can't remember, right? And he said, the people that know the truth is dead because they signed that contract. Are y'all catching what he was insinuating? Basically saying, signing with Bad Boy, signing with Diddy, it's kind of like, it's like a death contract. I'm just saying. He didn't say that explicitly, but that's damn sure what I caught as I listened to what Mace had to say. Basically saying, when you signed your name to that pad, you was basically giving your soul away. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see how this turned out. We're going to see if they actually come face to face, like Diddy say, to actually hash this out. I told y'all before, I need a special. <laughs> I need somebody non-biased to go through all the facts, even though the facts have been out there for the longest. Everybody ain't lying on Diddy. Everybody don't say the same thing about you for 20 years without there being some semblance of truth for, for uh, uh, of it. And let's just keep it real. Diddy is not an artist. Diddy's not a songwriter. 
Diddy is not, I, I guess you could say he's a producer. He's definitely a businessman. But pretty much, this is somebody that really doesn't have talent in the industry that has to use the talent of everybody around him to raise himself up. He's a door opener, but he he, he ain't the talent at the end of the day. It is what it is, okay? I am excited to see what happens with the story. We will continue to cover it, but make sure that you caught what Mace was putting out there. Craig Mack, Biggie, uh, everybody that really know the truth, or maybe what's going to speak the truth is dead. But we're going to move right along from that, okay? And we're going to talk about Nia Long and, oh, uh, God, her baby daddy. I keep wanting to call that man her husband, and he's not her husband. Let me explain. So this is Nia Long, and that's Ime Udoka, all right? That's the most current baby daddy that got the, the scandal right now with the Boston Celtics. At the bottom is Nia Long and her first baby daddy, Masai Dorsey Sr. Now, that's the only picture that I could really find of him on the internet. Um, and that was obviously like back in the 90s or early 2000s. Let me tell you something. Nia been fine. Nia, 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 Nia literally got better with age. I mean, it, all you can say about Nia is maybe she a little bit heavier. But that's just going to come with age. The lady is literally in her 50s, who, who's the same size they was in their 20s. But other than that, this lady is top-tier beauty. This is the kind of beauty that you want, the beauty that stays with you for decades. I don't know. I'm I'm getting off track. But I'm just going to say, whatever the Nia Longs, the Cynthia Baileys, the Kenya Moores, the, whatever that generation was doing, they killing these young girls. I'm, I'm, I'm just keeping it real. Come on now. Look at the black women in the industry that's in their 40s, 50s, and up now, even 60s, not counting Vivica Fox. I don't know who advised her to go get that horrible-ass plastic surgery. That shit looked terrible. We ain't counting her. But look at them, and look at these new girls that's coming up. The older women is killing the younger women. I don't know what it is. Somebody tell me. But anyway, moving right along from that. Nia Long's first baby daddy decided to release a statement on behalf of his ex and apparently his good buddy here, Ime, because they are all a family. They are all very close. I didn't know they was this damn close. Now, Nia and Masai's son is like 21 or 22, something like that, but they still co-parent him. They still come together. They're still a family unit. So it is what it is. So let's read his statement, which I wholeheartedly disagree with, but we're going to get into it. He said... All I can say is good things about Ime. He's a good man all these years. I'm happy he's in my son's life. First off, in my opinion, he should have never gave a statement. I don't give a damn how close you is to Nia, how good good of friends you is with Ime. At the end of the day, if the statement is not coming directly from Nia or Ime's camp, your ass don't need to be speaking on it. Why? Because even though you, you guys are very close and you are co-parent, and, and this man has been good to your son and you appreciate that, all that's cool. But unless you motherfuckers is a thruple, unless y'all all been rolling in the bed together, which I don't see nothing wrong with that if you was. I told y'all. I'm a believer in all kinds of relationships. I think if a man can have two girlfriends like D-Ray Davis that live in, a woman can also have two men. I don't see no wrong with it. And I don't think it make the men gay, just like it don't make the women gay. We're going to be equal rights up in this bitch. But anyway, <laughs> let me get back to it. I just think this shit is out of place. I don't give a damn how close he was. Unless he is literally the third wheel, he should have kept his damn mouth shut. But let's get to it. He said, he may made a mistake. And that's when my ass started itching. He said, every man needs another chance. Like the Bible says, the flesh is weak. He's not a bad guy. Hopefully he's learned from this. Now, this part of the statement like really made my ass itch because it is something that I've dealt with when confronting issues in my own family with the older generations, right? 70s, 60s, 50s babies, it is, I don't know what it is about them, but they do not understand the definition of a mistake. E may made a mistake. A mistake is when you make a misstep and you don't realize what you're doing and or you don't understand and comprehend the, the repercussions that's going to come with a certain action, a.k.a. I, um, uh, uh, what's a good example of a, of, of a mistake damn now i can't even think of it now but i guess you can say a mistake is like putting the wrong gas in your car or um 
uh, taking a, oh, here's a good example. Good example of a mistake, taking an alternative route to get to work because the route you normally take is, is clogged and busy and the traffic is bad, only to take this alternative route and it now takes you even longer to get to work even though you thought it would get you there faster. That is a mistake, right? What in the e did was a decision. And you want to know how it, was a, how it was a decision? Because he did it multiple times. He was very aware that it was wrong. He was very aware that he was doing this with the boss's wife, which is why they hid it. Even after being caught and asked to stop multiple times, he did not. Even after a nine-month-long investigation, he still chose to hide it from Nia because he knew if he had told her, she would have never packed up her and her child and moved up to Boston. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew what was on the line. He knew what he could lose. But that Wanda Bread Coochie, he could not stay away from it. Point blank. This ain't about... Oh, he's a bad guy. This is not about good or bad. This is a bad decision. This is a dumb decision. This is irresponsible. This is a lack of dick discipline. And literally his house crumbled down because of a, because he couldn't keep his shit in his pants or at least have enough respect to hire somebody to handle these needs that he had that would at least uphold some semblance of discretion. And at least not cost him his damn job. But we can't get coochie nowhere else. We got to at work. I'll never understand it. Like the Bible says, like the Bible says, the flesh is weak. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible. The Bible wouldn't approve of this couple living together in sin. The Bible wouldn't approve of them having a child out of wedlock. The Bible wouldn't approve of him being with her for almost two decades and never making her his lawful wedded wife. That's what the Bible wouldn't be okay with. So y'all love to pick and choose the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. God, forget, God, God didn't even bless this relationship if we want to be all the way real. See, here's the thing about believing in the Bible. You can't pick and choose what you want to out of it. Either, either you believe in it or you don't. Well, I guess you can pick and choose what you can out of it, but I'm going to hold you accountable. This whole relationship is in sin, so you don't bring the Bible into it now. Hopefully, he's learned from this. He ain't learned shit. He ain't learned shit. He ain't sorry. He's only sorry he got caught. Next statement from the ex, the ex-ex, baby daddy number one. It's easy to get to the top. Mm, no, it's not. But to stay at the top, it takes a different type of person. Okay, true. Right now in this season, you have to be very sensitive with women, unfortunately, because they hold the cards right now. You should have kept your damn mouth shut. You should have kept your mouth shut. Right now in this season, you have to be very sensitive with women. That is true. Because they hold the cards. No, you have to be sensitive with women because men in power since, I mean, the beginning of time have abused their power. And now the pendulum is swinging from one side to the other. And now women is not taking this shit no more. And society is punishing men for things that typically their forefathers got away with. There is something called karmic debt. I may not be using this term correctly. So my spiritual people that have a better understanding of it can correct me in the comment section. But... This is the way I look at it. For the first, like, what? Let, let's go from year zero to, I mean, 1980-something, right? For the first almost 2,000 years, we definitely lived, what, in a patriarchal society. Women and children were literally property of men, okay? Up into the 80s, men could r word their wives. It was not a such thing as telling a man no. And if a man did whatever to you, well, you looked at him the wrong way. Well, you didn't have no business working. Well, you didn't have no business wearing that. Well, uh, um... You know, if your body didn't want it, you wouldn't have came. You wouldn't have got wet. You would have stopped it. We already know the blaming and shaming tactic, the, the victim shaming that has literally been used since the beginning of time. And women just have to deal with um, the patriarchal big thumb of men. That's just been, that, that, that's been what it is, right? But now society is changing. And now we're in this transition period of not only men having more feminine energy, women having to have more masculine energy. So we're seeing the imbalance, right? And we're seeing things trying to teeter totter. And come on, no, come on now, Libras, it's Libra season. Get you explain this shit. Now we're seeing things trying to level out, but most importantly, we are seeing the spiritual ramifications of, of the shit the forefathers have done. Now y'all gotta pay. For, now we gotta pay for it. Now you do have to be extra sensitive towards women because typically you cannot fucking control yourself. 
But all up and through this statement, there's no accountability for Eme. This is just saying, well, this is what you got to do nowadays. You can't fuck the bitches that you work with. This, 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 I, I don't understand it. I don't, I don't understand it. You that hard up for sex that you can't do it outside of work. You literally can't wait until you get off. You couldn't stop after you've been asked. You were asking to get called. And low key, somewhere deep down the side, I think you've been, you've been looking for a way to get out of this relationship, Eme, and you subconsciously ruined it and ruined yourself in order to get out of it. That's the best I could put up, uh, put, put together. But this ex, Masai Dorsey, this is some bullshit. This is some bullshit. And low key, I'm gonna need Nia. Well, I mean, Nia don't speak for him. He a grown ass man. But it's just, as I was reading this, I'm like, there is some truth in it, but there is just no accountability for the man at all. None. And I know Nia is cho allegedly choosing to stick by her man, even though she has moved out of Boston. But I'm gonna just say this, Nia, between. The man you with now and the man you was with before, for these men to say they love you and they care about you so much. You know what I don't see in these statements or even the statements that he made, made publicly? I don't see any sympathy or empathy for you. I don't see any of them being apologetic or sympathetic towards you. And you're the one that's gotten hurt. Most importantly, I haven't seen any of them even mentioned the effects that this is going to have on your child, your 11-year-old that you have with e -Man. Because for some reason, people think that the cheatation that they do, oh, this is a relationship thing. It's not me as a father. No, but your sons and your daughters are watching you whether you want it, want to admit it or not. Let's call a thing a thing. When marital couples go through issues, it affects the children, period. I'm not saying this man should be taken out of his son's life, but what I'm saying is, just like if you have a mother that is a slut, and you see your mother's bedroom door be a revolving door, and you, if you as a kid have to constantly see random niggas come in and out your house, hear your mama get her back blown out constantly, that has an effect on you. Just like when your daddy is constantly cheating on your mama, that has an effect on you. When your mama crying, that has an effect on you. Because here's what men don't understand. Your children's well-being, upbringing, and mental health is a direct reflection of their mother's mental and emotional state, period. I don't care how many uh, women's fear videos you watch. I don't care how many men's fear videos y'all watch. I don't care about people talking about the separation of church and state. If you want your children to grow up to be happy and healthy and functional adults, you are going to have to make sure that the environment that they are raised in, which will be led by the mother, is as stress-free as possible. If she good, they good. If she ain't right, they gonna feel it. Even if she never speaks it, energetically, they're gonna feel it. And they see what you do. I'm just saying, it's I don't I don't know why people are not putting two and two together, but I do. It's very simple to me. But that's that's sad. But yeah, yeah, Neil, you need to rethink. You, you, you need extensive therapy yourself. For some reason, I'm feeling like you're probably like an emotional stuffer, but you need to get into therapy yourself and figure out why you keep picking these damn self-centered ass men that say they love you, but they, they don't they don't they don't really respect you and give a fuck. Anyway, moving right along, we gotta talk about Mia Thornton from Real Housewives of Potomac. She took to her IG this morning to let everybody know that she having financial troubles after basically being, I guess you can say, scammed, embezzled, whatever, by her family. Okay, let's get to it. She said, priest, pray for our family. Gordon, and Gordon is her husband, Gordon's brothers, who we trusted to support and carry on the family legacy, has recently revoked his access to the company bank account while we were out of the country. I've since learned that my salary will no longer continue past the next payroll cycle due to my unwavering loyalty to Gordon. The thought that the person who Gordon selected to run our empire and who we thought who would be the one to care for me and the kids has now manipulated the organizational structure and robbed us of everything that we own. As you now, if you don't have if you don't have a business or don't understand business or how this can happen, this is how this this is how this can happen. 
when you open up a business or have several businesses or become a business entity and you start making a certain amount of money in order to actually hold on to the majority of your money you have to literally separate yourself from your own corporation right so just like jeff bezos has amazon but jeff bezos only owns like this much of amazon he's the face of it but he only owns this much but he's still worth xyz because of the stocks anyway with that being said you have to turn your business your baby that you built from the ground up into its own separate corporation structure so you ain't basically paying like 50 percent of your damn money out to the u.s government every year in taxes okay so with that being said when you once you have this damn structure you have this corporation you then have to have board members you have to have people running you have to have a delegation and if you are not careful it has been very very easy to literally get booted out of your own company that you started, it happens every single day. Because what happens is when you officially make your business a, a corporation, you don't really own it no more. You're just now like an employee of it. You're, you're a separate entity, if that makes sense. And so they brought in family, thinking that this was going to work. And for whatever has happened within their family, they didn't been booted out. Gordon and I built this company from the ground up, brought on family members since 2013, never thought that after a decade of building generational wealth and opportunities, it would be taken from us overnight. Long story short, her and her husband finna have to take our family to court. They're about to have a massive court battle. Um, it doesn't really matter if what was done was even like legal or not. You, you, there's, there's gonna have to be a payout. Here's what's probably gonna happen. They may not get their business back. They may not ever work for their businesses again, but whoever is left on the board will probably have to pay them some sort of settlement, but they gonna feel that shit monetarily. And here is why, and this is why you don't envy nobody's life. And even when you see quote unquote rich people, baby, they can be, they, they can have literally less in their bank account than you because she don't have access to any of her money, which means Unless she got some money in her personal accounts to pay her bills and to keep her expenses flowing, baby, money finna be tight. Baby, cards is finna get declined. But most likely, they have other high-profile or rich friends that will lend them some cash or they'll go get a loan from the bank if their credit isn't ruined to lend them some cash to hold them over until... Um, you know, they get this sorted out in court. But this happens all the time, even in divorces, right? Jennifer Williams was a good example. Her ex-husband kicked her out, revoked all her access to the credit cards and to the bank accounts, and she had to go live in Evelyn's town, Evelyn Lozada's town home, because she literally didn't have no damn money. It's sad. It's very unfortunate. Now, after posting that, apparently a family member by the name of Brittany Yvonne said, but you won't tell the whole truth, though. Mia responded and said, what's the whole truth, Brittany? You know your granddad and aunts and uncles would not own medical offices if it wasn't for Gordon. Let's, excuse me, let's start there. What am I leaving out? I would love to know. So this is some family shit. And y'all know when you mix family and business, you're going to always have issues. We're going to continue to cover the story, but baby, this is going to be messy, and I'm hoping that the cameras was there to catch it. But I do hope you get your money, though. I don't wish going broke on nobody. I just, I don't think that shit funny. I don't think that shit cool. I just, I don't. Anyway, moving right along to talk about the R&B singer Miguel and his longtime well, his wife, but longtime girlfriend, um, Nazanin Mandy, okay? They are both uh b both uh, like mixed it's weird they're both multiracial i guess you could call them they're an interesting couple but gorgeous nonetheless i'm gonna say this it's a shame they ain't had no kids low-key i know you shouldn't have kids just because you're both good looking um but it's it's a shame i don't know i i don't give that what i had going on i'm not finna give you two decades and we both look like this and you don't give me no munchkin i'm so i'm sorry you're just gonna have to come see your baby on the weekends i didn't it, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, wow. But anyway, this ain't about looks, because guess what? You can be beautiful, but the most beautiful motherfuckers still seem to can't keep no man. Moving right along. They've only been married for a few years, but they uh, have announced their, divorce, their upcoming divorce after recently reconciling back in February of this year, okay? I dug and did a little research with the help of several youtube videos okay shout out to real reality gossip they did a very good breakdown on the history of their relationship okay the both 36 years old met when he was 19 and she was 18 going on 19 
and was at the uh, very beginning of his career. What I gather from their relationship is that he has always been the star. It has always been about him and she has always rather consciously or subconsciously put herself on a back burner. Okay. When they first got together, he was out working, hustling, trying to make the music thing work. And she literally worked retail to support them both. Then as his career continued to thrive and his money got better, of course, she didn't have to do that. And he took care of her. And then she, she said, OK, I'm going to leave my regular job and I'm going to try to make it in the industry now. And it just never quite worked for her. You know, her music never quite took off. Um, I don't know why she never tried to get into like speaking gigs or engagements, but maybe she did. It just her star never rose, but his continued to rise. Right. And. Nazanin, to be very honest with you, you say that my start just never really rose. But if we're being completely honest, I think that you did not put in the hard work and dedication that was needed to make your star rise because you were too busy making sure that he was the star. You was too busy taking care of home, even though y'all had no children. So your ass didn't have to be at home. But you was too busy and honestly too comfortable taking care of him and pushing him that you put yourself on a back burner. You didn't go to auditions because you had to make sure he was straight. You didn't go to, to, to go sing at concerts because you had to make sure he was straight. Even when you thought about going and singing on the road, with, you couldn't because now you had to make sure, well, you didn't want to be away from him t for too long. So due to your like nervous attachment style, because she has dealt with depression throughout the relationship, because as beautiful as she is, and I'm sure as, and as many opportunities that have been brought her way, Nothing has worked. And she has always felt like I don't have a purpose. All right. And it's one thing to, you know, it, it, it's one thing to, to, to come from nothing and not have a purpose. It's another thing to like be around people that are movers and shakers. And you like, fuck, I just don't know which way to go. Right. And that'll make you have like imposter syndrome, make you feel like you're not good enough. And you'll kind of have some resentment and jealousy towards your partner. Now, let's get on Miguel's ass. Over their 17-year relationship, okay, they've broken up several times. Why? Not only just because of her mental health issues, but because of his as well. And because of her feeling like she don't have a purpose. And Miguel has said it, that he's always felt different in his head. He couldn't really explain it, but he's felt it even since he was a child, right? He's always had to kind of live like a double life. Long story short, Miguel's mom was a, like, devout Christian or Catholic, very, very strict, sheltered him. His father was a hood dude, was a street dude. So he has always kind of bounced in between both worlds and struggled to find his own identity. So you got one girl, you got one partner that don't know her purpose. You got another partner with, with identity issues. And then you put beauty on top of it. And why in the hell did, did it, what, what, what? And they wonder why they've had issues, okay? So they've broken up and gotten back together and broken up and gotten back together over the course of 17 years until they finally got into therapy. And that seemed to be a game changer and helped them to communicate. But it's one thing that stuck out to me. Miguel said that every time they broke up, they would get back together because, and I quote, I love her, but I'm not in love with her. And I've never really been in love. And that's something even with me. I've never really been in love, right? So it's just interesting to me how... He could spend that much time with her, how she could be that loyal, that dedicated to him. But he doesn't think she's good enough for a marriage. He still never felt in love with her. And she, instead of working on herself, decided to just latch on to him because she didn't know what else to do and neglected herself. And so the universe has now forced them both to go their separate ways and find who they are. And honestly, they may come back together later, but they gonna do they gonna they still both at the age of 36, they have a lot of soul searching to do because instead of looking within themselves to figure out who they are, they've really been looking into the other. <laughs> he been looking to her to complete him, she been looking to him to complete her, and that is something you cannot do. A person cannot make you happy, you gotta make yourself happy. And then that person can add to your happiness or take away. But you have to have your own love tank full first or at least three quarters. I'm just saying, right? Now, if we're being honest, there has always been rumors about Miguel's sexuality. And so I also believe that another layer of their relationship has been him keeping her along 
simply for his image. This is me not saying he gay, because they, they say every damn man gay in the industry or every man that uh, like to wear certain kind of clothes or is more metro or this or that. Or, I mean, honestly, he a pretty he a pretty dude. So especially if you're a pretty dude and he little. So yeah, they gonna, that's just what they're going to say anyway. But that's not the point. The point is, in addition to him feeling obligated to be with her because they've been together since they were teenagers, in addition to him loving her really low-key more as a friend, not really being in love, kind of like Robin Dixon and Juan Dixon, he also kept her alone because literally she was good for his career. She took care of home so he could just focus on work, and she gave him a shield against sexuality rumors, against gay rumors. No matter what, he could say, oh, I'm with her. And she's beautiful, so you can't say that I'm gay. You get it? <laughs> and so, finally, um, to wrap this up, over the course of their relationship, anytime she would try to have a project that would pop off, she would try to venture on to do something, she would always just hit delays, right? Not necessarily from him, but just almost from the universe, from God, I would say. And I always heard coming up that sometimes you won't get your blessings until you let certain people go. And your inability to let people go is what's keeping you from what God got for you over here. And I low-key think that not only has she not been focused on herself, not only has he been holding her back and he has been selfish, because motherfucker, you ain't put out that much music that you couldn't put this girl on in y'all 17 years of being together. And look, low-key, y'all should have been a duo act. Y'all should have been the, the multi-racial version of Sonny and Cher if we keeping it real. Hell, Beyonce and Jay-Z have done it. What in the hell wrong with y'all? And y'all beautiful. But anyway, um, shit, I lost my train of thought of what I was saying. The point is, <laughs> I just think the reason why her career hasn't taken off and she hasn't really found herself in a purpose because she 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 made a, a person that was only meant to be in her life for a short-term season, she gave him a long-term position. And we got to be careful with that, right? You know, in life, you got your you got your leaves, you got your branches, you got your roots. It's very few roots that you gonna meet ever. You meet them, hold on to them, right? The branches, they they stay there a little longer, but they'll fool you because you'll think they're a root and they're not. They they're a branch, so they stay there longer, but eventually they fall off and die away. And the leaves just come and go every season, right? You gotta know where every person in your life fit in, and when you try to keep a person longer than what you was supposed to. There will be karmic ramifications of it. So, anyway, at the age of 36, they now got to get out here and figure it out. But hopefully they don't, like, jump right into another relationship. They, like, do some soul searching and figure out who they are and what they want. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what they do. We'll see if they actually go through with the, di with the divorce together for all those years only to get divorced after only a few years of being married but that's interesting to me too and let me say this it's something wrong with people out here where they will do any and everything but get married i know i don't want to get married and i'm not being a hypocrite because guess what i'm not with no motherfucker by them by myself but listen to what i'm saying this couple has gotten matching tattoos they done bought houses together they did everything that a married couple do, but waited like 14 years to actually get married. Money is not an excuse. I can, Even if I'm not where I want to be financially, I can go right down to Cobb Corny Courthouse and marry you for, what, 80 bucks, 100 bucks? Hell, I don't know. And we can figure out everything else later. So ladies, never, and, and men too, because some women make the excuse too, never let somebody make the you know, the excuse of, oh, I'm just not ready. I'm not financially ready. I'm not where I want to be. No, you just don't want to marry me. And just say that. But you don't want to marry me, but you don't want to lose me. And you don't want nobody else to have me either. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I'm not a relationship expert. So I can't really dig in that the way like a more articulate person could. But anyway, that was our show for today. Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms. Just type in Storm I wrote. I will pop up. Um, in addition to that, make sure you make sure you're on my texting list 678-679-6077 so you can get all updates um, when I drop a video or even when I go live and announcements as well. I think that's it, guys. I will catch you all later. It's storm show. It's storm show.